Hi everyone, it's Mary Ann and welcome to Happy Paper People. Today we are going to make a journal out of five envelopes. Now some of you have made journals out of envelopes before and you know that you can use more or you can use less. And if you've made a journal out of envelopes before, you also know that there are multiple ways of doing it. Many, many ways. What I'm going to show you today is for those who have never made a journal out of an envelope or envelopes and would like to know a basic journal just to get you started, <clears throat> excuse me, once you know the basic concept of how to do it, then it's real easy and you can take off from there on adding things and cutting different things. So we're going to do a basic five envelope journal and uh, give everyone who has, has never made one an opportunity to make one and, and this is for everybody. Everybody can do this. So this is one that I have completed so that you'll know what our end result is going to be. And this, the string that it is tied with is the same string that I bind um, journal signatures with. I just set it on um, a purple ink pad and held my dauber over top of it like this and then pulled it through and colored it purple. So not perfectly purple. I wanted it to be a little distressed, dark in some places, light in some. So it's kind of like the paper is. This paper is Nightfall from Minte and it's very beautiful paper. I love the teal and the purple. The button closure is actually a button that we had made a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago on one of our Thursday mass makes, we, we made paper buttons, and that is um, in the playlist of, of mass makes. And I had not yet punched the holes in this one, and it's perfect for, the color was perfect for this. So I took, this is a, a one inch uh, button, and then I took a three quarter inch and, and put it underneath it. That raises the closure up a bit so that there is room to uh, wind the string around it. So I took the one inch button, I glued the, the three quarter inch button to it, and we'll probably do that on this closure. Maybe we'll do something different. And then just um, made a, a circle in the string and put it around with a little bit of glue. I did that before I even glued it down. Tied a knot in the string so it was on there. Put a little bit of glue on that as well. And then I just took the whole thing with the string on it and glued it down here so that it's real easy to use. I used dark glitter glue so it'll last, it'll stay. And, and then just tied a little charm with some um, corresponding fiber uh, on the end. So a little uh, musical note, Nightfall. Always makes me think of Phantom of the Opera. Not sure why, but a beautiful paper. Okay, so as you look at this and you think, wow, there's a whole page. You could put a pocket or a tuck or something. You're absolutely right. And that's what I mean by learn the basic journal and then take off with it and do whatever you want. So here is our flap closure. And here is the, and obviously this is the flap of an envelope. The uh, first page, let's see. Okay, no, it's big because I put um, a teeny tiny journal um, in here that I like to do with the cards from Minte and Stamperia um, and companies like that. So I will do another quick video because that doesn't take but 10 minutes to show you how I do that and it's super, super easy. So we've got the envelope pocket here and this is a solid page to do what you want with it. Another solid page and the envelope pocket here. Another solid page, envelope pocket here. Oops, I skipped one. The second one that's a solid page is cut so that you have a large pocket here. That's why there isn't a pocket on one of the sides of that one. Okay, envelope pocket here, solid page, envelope pocket here, and the back cover. So super easy, but super cute. And you can use it as an ephemera holder. Um, you could use it as a gift, fill it up with uh, fun stuff. Lots of things you can do with it. So today, I grabbed some envelopes. I've got, I've made them out of craft um, colored envelopes like this. And the first question is always what size envelopes? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I've got some this size. Uh, this one was white envelopes and I just distressed the edges with purple, a little bit bigger. The one today is even larger than that. Um, it's size of envelope doesn't make any difference at all. How you do it is exactly the same. 
and, and I grabbed these envelopes. I haven't um, uh, used these yellow ones yet, but and I thought they would be fun to use, but I grabbed this bright yellow because it is a style of envelope that um, may be a little more um, challenging to deal with. And so if that's what you have and you're wondering how should I handle that, I thought I would do that today. And what I mean by that is the flap on this one is straight and the envelope, well this one's already glued together, the envelope itself is cut straight across. So that's super easy to deal with. It was the same in the one that I just showed you. This one, it's lined already, which is awesome. It gives it a little bit of extra structure, a little bit of um, uh, strength and stability. But the envelope um, opening comes down to a V. So how do I deal with that? There are several ways and you can choose. So I will show you one and tell you um, maybe another one. Okay, so we've got five envelopes and I have numbered them one through five so that it'll be uh, hopefully easy for you to follow along. So we're going to take envelope number one and two first. Okay, we're going to turn two upside down and we're going to put two inside, insert it inside envelope number one. So we just take the flap to the flap and insert it in number one, okay? And so we have an open flap out here. We want this flap from, from envelope number one because this is our flap closure on the whole uh, thing right here. This is our flap closure. So we definitely want to keep, better keep that close at hand. We definitely want to keep that flap out there. But we do want this glued down so that two stays inside one. We do not want to glue on this side right here because we want a pocket. We want this to be an envelope pocket. So we want to glue on the back. So we're gonna glue back here. So we're gonna take our glue. Now, the larger your envelopes are, the easier they are to deal with. The tinier they are, the tiny ones, or the smaller they are, even these craft ones are a little bit more difficult to deal with. So here's where I would um, use, if you're using small envelopes, I would use a glue that's gonna give you a couple of seconds to reposition it. Um, I usually don't use art glitter glue right there because there's no time to reposition it. Um, barely art, real, there really isn't either. With Stamperia, there really isn't a whole lot either, but these are large envelopes and easy to deal with. Um, you can put that in and leave it in and then just open, pull it open and stick your glue bottle down in it to do it right there. But I wanted to pull it out to show you. Okay, so now I just need to get that back in. And you can see, because it's large, it's going pretty easily, but the smaller it is, the more uh, difficult. I want to make sure that this still folds. I want to make sure that they're lined up top to bottom. Are they lined up top to bottom? And so just a couple seconds is all I need, but I need to make sure that I have a couple seconds to move it around if it's just um, a little too far in or not far enough in that I can't fold this or it's not the top or bottom is off or one side is wonky and they're not even on the top or bottom. I just need a couple seconds to be able to move that. Okay, so there's a one and two. And we burnish that down and we've got pocket over here and we've got pocket over here, at least at this point. Okay, now let's take envelope three and four. Now three and four, we're going to put together like this so that becomes one flap. We have three and four. So set three on top of four. And all we're going to do is put glue either on the top of this flap or the bottom of this flap, either one. Doesn't really matter which you want one you do because we're gonna glue the two together. Whichever one seems easiest for you to get the glue on. Make sure I get all the way down there. And if not, if I don't get all the way down there, it's okay because once it's glued down, I can go to the other side and put a little bit just under the edge. All right, I wanna make sure that they're even top to bottom.
And then I'm going to bring those two together and burnish that down. It doesn't take a whole lot of burnishing, so I'm just using my fingers today. Okay, so now the uh, flap of three and four are glued together. That could use a little more. I didn't get all the way to the edge. Totally okay, as long as they're in place, I can add more glue on any edge that is needed. So three and four. And here's where I can go here and look and see if I got close enough to the edge. And if I didn't, I can just go underneath and come on, squeeze out there. Try not to squeeze too much and then nothing comes out and then I squeeze too much. Uh, this edge, you could lose a little on that corner as well. So if you didn't, sometimes it's harder to get down to right to the, the bottom of that. And I don't worry about that because I can come back here and run all along, along the entire thing. I can run a little bead of glue. Okay, that one just needs time to sit. Okay. All right, so there is three and four together. Now we're going to take three and four and insert them into envelope two, just like that. Okay, there's three and there's four. We're going to insert them into envelope two. All right, so you can either put them in if you have large envelopes, get that all perfectly aligned, and then come over. Let's see, where did I go? I was trying to go between three and four. That doesn't work. You have to go behind four. Okay, so insert that. If they're large and they're easy to work with, then you can put that right in place, and then come over like this, and insert your glue bottle right down here and put glue in. But because this comes to a point, it's awkward. It's hard to know if I've gotten all the way down to the point. And I don't want that point not glued down. So if I put things in and out of that pocket, it's going to catch. So I'm just going to bring it out and do it from out here. Put a bead of glue all the way around. And then some on the inside. You know it's gonna be well sealed down. All right, so now I'm inserting three and four into envelope two, which is to your left. Remember one was on the right, two is to the left, so I'm inserting there. Once I know that it's easy to push them down too far, you don't wanna push them in, push it in too far, but you also want it enough that you can close this. Make sure it's even top to bottom. And and then I'm just going to turn that over because right here is where it's glued. I'll burnish it down right there. See how easy this is? And they're super, super cute. It'd be fun to fill up with goodies and, and uh, put in happy mail or give to somebody as a gift. Okay, so there's our flap. There's number two, then three and four that we just inserted in here, and then one. Okay. So now what do we have left? We have left number five. So let's take envelope number five and to turn it upside down or around, whatever you want to call that. And we're going to insert number five into number one, just like that. Okay, so five goes down into number one and we want to make sure we can still close the whole thing. We want them even top to bottom going to stick out just a tiny bit out here because they can't be the exact same width coming out or the exact same height because it's inside the other. So, you know, the dimension of the other, the thickness of the other is going to stick out, but it's not a big deal. Once you get it decorated and if you just decide to distress the corners or the edges, you really don't even see it. It's not a big deal at all. So don't worry about that. Okay, so now we want glue on number five. And we want to get that back down there into number one. So take the flap of five. I'm going to glue this. You could just certainly mass make these. Sit down with a bunch of envelopes. A lot of people have lots of envelopes. Um, works with junk, oops, excuse me, junk mail envelopes as well because if you're covering it with uh, paper, then you're going to cover whatever's on there. Except if you have envelopes, or I'm sorry, windows in those envelopes, 
you could even leave little windows. That would be cute too. So I'm going to make sure I can still close that, make sure they're even top to bottom, and then go ahead and burnish that down. Okay. Yeah, you can sit down with a bunch of different envelopes, different sizes, and put them together like this and have journal bases ready to go. Now here's another fun tip. If you take three of these and you um, make them, put them all together and make it as a signature, I wouldn't put a tie closure on here. In fact, um, I might, you know what, this would work. I would, I would glue this down right in the middle and I would have two tuck spots right here. That's what I would do with that one. But you make three of them and then you bind them into a book, each one being a signature. They make awesome signatures in books and they can be full, totally full. If you like to fill your books with lots of um, journal cards and tags and uh, ephemera and things like that, you've got a lot of places to do it on here. Now you can see you also have a lot of solid uh, places and those solid places are where you can add um, tuck spots and pockets and all kinds of things. Okay, so now we are ready to decorate. Okay, I'm going to move that over just a bit and I'm going to put a cap on the glue until I get some paper cut and ready to go. All right, so the first thing I want to do is decide what you want to decorate with, what kind of paper and I think I'm going to use these papers from Bloomville today. This is Minte. Minte is the company and the collection is Bloomville. And I do still have Bloomville in stock if it's something you've never seen before and you really like. A couple of them I've already used. I don't know that this is even a full paper pack. Um, I have, um, I, I know I've got a whole bunch of singles here. So it, it's um, a fun collection. Um, there's some different different colors and some different scenes in there, but it may not be a full collection, but that's okay because a full sheet is not going to go on a page and I can cut a page in multiple ways to get different focal points. So the first thing that I want to do is decide what I want to be my front, the front cover right here. And the reason I do that first is because if I start, if I take a paper pack and I start cutting it up and then um, I come to the front and I don't have any great focal point left for the front, then I'll be frustrated. Oh, that would work. That's just a, a remnant left that looks like it's probably a, a half, a, maybe not even quite a six, it might be six inches. So I cut a sheet in half and there's the other half. That would actually make a very pretty um, focal point right there. Let's take a quick look and see what else is here that might be a good focal point. Okay, so this is that paper we were just looking at. Um, so obviously I had cut it in half and used this half for something. Either half would make a pretty focal point. I do like the bird and the butterflies up there. It would be very pretty. The back of that, that's cool. But maybe not the front door. This would be very pretty on the front. And that would be very pretty on the front. The back of that. Oh, the doors. I always like doors um, on the front cover. It's like you're opening the door and walking into the world of that book. Uh, the butterflies are great. Another of the flowers. Another one of that. Um, looks like, whoops, I'm knocking things over here. Got some repeat. Man, I don't know if I have all six pages in here, but um, you can see Minte always has a large. Um, like montage right here on somewhere down on the bottom then they have a smaller montage on top and then there's always something small on the side so you can really cut it to get three things uh, three focal points out of that and then there's the cards a couple sheets of cards so those will be fun and these are what I use to make the mini books so I think that this would be very pretty for the front so let's go ahead and use that all right so what I'm going to do is measure my envelope the width here and the height and it is <clears throat> let's see here if I get it right up to the edge it is six wide <clears throat> and how high 
six by, to that to the edge, eight and four, five, six, seven, eight, and seven eighths. Six by eight and seven eighths. Well, that's an odd, awkward um, number. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take whatever the height and the width of my envelope, and I'm going to just subtract a quarter of an inch so that I have an eighth inch border. Six by, what did I say, eight and seven eighths. Okay, so if it's six wide and I subtract a quarter inch, then I want it to be five and three quarters wide. So five and three quarters is gonna be the width of my panel. And I'm doing this because I'm gonna have more than one. Every time I have a full side here, I'm going to need a full panel to cover it. So that's why I wanna know so I don't have to keep measuring it every single time. And then eight and seven eighths. Well, that's just a little bit awkward. So eight and seven eighths, and if I want to subtract a quarter, then I'm gonna subtract um, one eighth and two eighths, two eighths being a quarter. And that brings me to eight and five eighths. Hope that didn't lose anybody. Odds are you won't have an envelope. This isn't. This really is an odd one. None of the ones I've done so far um, have the width or the height of eighths. They're always in um, quarters or halves. In fact, a real common one is um, five and three quarters. Or uh, is that five and three quarters? This one, which is for cards, which was is um, five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So when I subtract a quarter, it's five by seven. So that envelope is made for a five by seven card. And so that's a real easy number to work with. So, so I know that I need um, panels that are five and three quarters by five and seven eighths. I'm gonna set that right there so I don't forget. And so I wanna look at this and say, all right, it needs to be five and three quarters wide. Let's first make sure that it's wide enough. I put that right on there. It is, it's just slightly wider. It's one eighth inch wider than five and three quarters. So I could take an eighth of an inch off either side, probably this side. Okay, and then eight and, um, or eight. Oh boy, I wrote down that, I did that wrong. I wrote that wrong. You're probably screaming at me. <laughs> I heard you. Okay, eight and seven eighths, then I need it to be eight and five eighths. There we go. Okay, so eight and five eighths tall. So what I wanna do is look at this. I know that this is 12 inches tall, so I wanna look at it and decide where I want that eight and five eighths because I can choose what is actually going to be the cover. I would love to have the butterflies in. I would love to have the birds in. So if I go up here to eight and five eighths above the butterflies, what if I even get all these flowers in up here? Um, well, let me just put the top on, let's see, eight and a half plus one eighth is eight and five eighths. Okay, if I didn't cut anything off the top, that's where it would be, and the bottom would be right down there. And that's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. This butterfly is kind of sort of center, the bird is just off center, and these butterflies are up above. So. Perfect, I'm gonna leave it at that. So there is my front panel. Now I didn't cut the width down yet, but I'm just checking my height, so that is good. Okay, and so now it needs to be five and three quarters wide. Let's see, do I wanna cut it off behind the bird or the other side? Yep, behind the bird. Five and three quarters, I don't have to cut off much. I think it was about an eighth of an inch. There we go. There it is, there's my front panel. All right, so now I could choose what is going to be the back panel, um, which is the outside cover, if I want to. Do I want that to be the other half of this piece of paper? Uh, let's see where it is here. <clears throat> so here's that piece of paper right there. I could put the other half on the back so when you turn it over or open it up, it kind of completes that wreath. Or I could let the back be 
Uh, the back could be um, just butterflies. There's probably enough on that scrap. Not a scrap that's been all cut up. There's probably enough there. If not, I've got another sheet. The back could be all butterflies. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'm uh, totally convinced that it is prettier one way or the other. The back could also be flowers. Um, or it could be a scene. Maybe I want to do that. Maybe this uh, bird over here, up in his nest, that would be very pretty, wouldn't it? Maybe I can get that one on too. That flower down there that drops, that's pretty. But I'd like to keep this whole yellow flower in there. So I want to see if I'm able to, maybe, I, maybe not, maybe I just cut it right here and that flower doesn't exist. Let's see, if I put that there, then it would come to about right here. That would be okay. Okay, and then widthwise, yep, we'd be totally fine. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use that bird for the back panel. <clears throat> so I know that I need for it to be uh, five and three quarters wide. So I'm going to, This is the piece I want, and I want it to be five and three quarters wide. So there's five and three quarters. Okay, what's that gonna do? Okay, now if I take that down here. I'm also looking at this whole scene over here, which is very usable. And what am I gonna cut into if I go all the way down? I don't know that I'll go all the way down, just so I might have the opportunity to use that lantern sitting on the little wood, um, slab which is pretty cute so i know that it was going to go to roughly about here so if i just go down to this area and i know i've hit the eight and five eighths and i will come over here and i will go eight and a half plus one eighth is eight and five eighths and i want to start at that end because I don't want to slice through this vignette over here. So eight and a half plus one eighth. Make sure I got that right. Okay. Keep losing my mark. The weird glare right there. Okay, so now I'm going to bring that back and I just felt it as it hit the line coming the other direction. So I know that I can stop right there pull that out. I can pull this one out. And I can bring that back. Okay, so I've saved this vignette here without cutting, either cutting across for my height or cutting um, down for my width. And so I've still got some nice things that I can use. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to be the back panel right there. And Yeah, that works. All right, so let's get some glue and glue these two down. I'm gonna move this just for a moment. Love that cutter, but it's awfully big and right in my way. All right, this is our this is our front. So this is our back cover. I'm just gonna do the back cover first here. No particular reason. I'm gonna keep all of these scraps because they're not really scraps. They're definitely big enough to use. Right, and our back piece right here. Now, I think I'm considering whether I want to um, distress, might distress the envelope, but this feels like it needs to be cut just a hair shorter. There's not, doesn't feel like there is an eighth of an inch on each side. So I'm going to do that. Um, just going to cut it just a hair. Maybe a hair and a half. <laughs> hmm. Just a swirly ribbon's width. That's all. <laughs> okay, and let's see if that's enough. Perfect. Just enough to have a border. Okay, but what I'm considering as I look at this, because this is a pale... Uh, peachy pink, pink, pinky peach. 
and I'm wondering if I want to distress this card before putting it down. That's a possibility, but I'm not sure that I do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so I can distress the envelope. Let's look at this. Sometimes you have to open it up so that you can see just that page. Let's see if we've got enough. I, I might have measured those off by a sixteenth because it's just a hair, just a hair big. So I'm going to cut this one just a teeny tiny swirly ribbon amount as well. A hair and a half is all it is. I gotta figure out something to do with these. They're just fun little, fun little swirlies that get cut off. Okay. Much better. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put that down and then I'll go do the back. I'm using Stamperia craft glue. I'd use this or art glitter glue or barely art glue or whatever is your favorite adhesive. It really doesn't matter. This is also a really good place to use double stick tape. Sometimes I'll use double stick tape on these like I do on albums or um, large folios. This paper is really thick. Um, I like double stick tape especially if the paper is not really thick because I don't want any bumps and lumps from adhesive underneath and it not whoops not gonna get that with a double stick tape at all but um, on this paper that is really thick I don't get it anyway so I usually just use the glue okay so I'm gonna burnish that down a bit and I have a feeling I might need to put a little more adhesive underneath it because I kind of picked it up right before it sealed to move it just a hair. So it kind of pulled apart the adhesive that was just on the verge of drying. So when it goes back down, it may not have been wet enough. Better a little too much glue than not quite enough. And that's no big deal to go back and add a little more. Okay. So there is our front. I love this really wide bone folder for things like this. Okay, we'll give that a chance to completely adhere. All right, and Let's do the back. Actually, I'm going to do it like that, I think, so that I can see exactly where that edge is as I put it down to make sure it's straight. Sometimes if the envelope behind it is peeking out just a hair or a hair and a half, um, it's hard to tell exactly where the edge of the envelope is that you're working on. And it can be end up crooked, so I like it to be straight. So if I have it laid out so I'm only seeing, only seeing the envelope I'm working on, I'm gonna line it up with the outside edge, then I'm gonna line it up with my top and bottom. There we go. Okay. I need to. I'll come back in here to the corners, give them just a little bit more. That is certainly easy to do, but it also gives me that extra second to put them down when most of the adhesive, all that had plenty, just hadn't dried yet. Okay. There we go. Oops, I didn't need to rub that three times and make that uh, gluey. 
Okay, so if you have never seen this eraser, this is a glue eraser. This is exactly what it is for. When you get glue on something and you need to get that glue off, it just doesn't come off with anything else. Um, this glue eraser, you know, probably shouldn't even take the time to bother because I'm going to distress the edges. So it's going to end up, oh, and it needs to be completely dry in order to do that. But um, trying to show you how and it's not completely dry. So all I'm doing is kind of smearing it around. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Okay, so we've got the front cover on. We've got um, pocket here. We've got pocket here. We've got a solid here, solid here, a solid here. Okay, so if we want to make a large side pocket, like I did in here, like this, then this is one envelope. One of the sides is gonna be open. We don't want it to be open anymore, right? So I did that on the second page. So here's our first page. Here's the second page. So this is the one that I did that on. So I've got a solid over here and I just made this a solid and cut the edge so it could be a, a solid pocket. And you can do that on more than one. I'm gonna bring the cutter back over here. <clears throat> you can do it with scissors. I am not very good with scissors at cutting a long strip perfectly straight. And I would like that edge to be perfectly straight. So all I'm going to do is put it in. So I'm going to take off just the very edge of the envelope. That should do it. Let's take a look. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to have a pocket here and then I'm going to cover both of those and this will be um, a side and inside pocket. Okay, so this, this envelope is lined and the lining is not sealed down all the way. So I'm going to want to do that. I'm going to want to give that lining a little bit of adhesive to make sure that it stays down. Okay, so then a pocket here, solid here, solid here. I could come back here and make this another pocket and have then a pocket here. So let's do that. Let's make this one another large side pocket by just barely trimming off the edge. Just barely. Little yellow swirly cues. All right. They'd probably be cute um, glued down with a little flower up above them. They make cute little flower uh, stems. Of course, it'd help if they were green, but all right. You always know where your front is because that's where your front flap, your cl flap closure is. Okay, so there's our first page. Here's our second. Here's our third page. Here's our fourth. And our back cover. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of uh, glue in here. Um, don't normally use lined envelopes either and I honestly didn't realize that these were lined when I grabbed them I just knew that they were large so you could see and that they had this uh, style which is sometimes a little more difficult to deal with so I could show you that so I'm just gonna take my barely art down there and put a little bit of adhesive in and then I'll come right up here to the edge I just want that white to stay down there so it doesn't get in the way when I'm trying to slide things in that pocket and have the you know the lining constantly coming out and getting caught and tearing okay so that sides down nicely all right let's flip it over and now we have this side so that's in pieces that is down except right here so we'll do this and anytime I can put it on the smaller of the two pieces I'm adhering together, that is the wisest thing to do because if I put it on the larger piece, I don't know exactly where to stop. And if I get it outside on the yellow, then I have to be careful that this doesn't glue the envelope, whole envelope doesn't just glue shut. I can see that this flap of the envelope is not down. 
So I will glue that as well. Okay, and then how about this piece? That's kind of sort of down, but we'll get that as well. And right up on the edge and over the edge, no big deal. Just wipe it back on there, okay. And let's check that last spot over here is this one is this one down it seems to be it it wasn't underneath and I glued that little yellow or little point down and it is holding it down so I'm gonna put some underneath it just to make sure it stays down now if I go to this side looking at the same thing just want to make sure see how it's open here I just want to go along this edge and make sure that that's down and how about this one is it the same because that part will whoops didn't get underneath it because that was down so I don't want to glue my envelope together I just want to glue the liner to the envelope and that's an awkward thing that you don't normally have to do so that's taken a little more a little more time because you don't normally normally have to do that now I want this to stay down too. Anything that's up here, this is probably good because all the weird little things of envelopes are happening here that don't normally happen. So if they do, you'll know what to do. Just put that down. I don't worry a whole lot about it being glued perfectly because I'm going to cover it with paper. But this like right up to the edge, if the whole edge is flapping, yes, I'll glue that down um, so that uh, when I put the paper on, because I, I am going to have a border, remember, then that corner isn't flapping up even underneath the paper that I put on. Okay, <clears throat> so this needs to be covered fully. Now, we have to be careful when we cover this fully that we're not gluing our paper to this part of the envelope. Otherwise, when you go to put something in, you'll be stopped right here. Okay. So there is a couple of ways to deal with that. One is you can put the uh, paper, we can cut our paper, whatever it is that we're gonna put on this page, and we can put the glue on the yellow part and then just set it down, and that is just open right there. Another is to take another piece of paper, like a piece of coffee dyed paper, and it would be like lining the envelope, and just um, putting that right here uh, just to catch this V and gluing that down really well. I don't think that that's really necessary and we do have um, really good thick paper here. So I think that will work just fine. Now, every time you go to do something before you um, glue a paper down or glue anything down, go back to the front of your book and look for your flap and make sure that your book is turned right side up because the way I had turned this to get to those awkward angles was upside down. But it doesn't look upside down because the one is the same. And remember, we had to turn the number five envelope upside down to insert it. So you always want to go back and, and look for the flap. Make sure that's the, the front. Make sure you're right side up so you're not putting your pages on upside down because we know that some of our numbers are upside down. Okay, so I need to cover this one and this one. There's two three, four, and we cut that one, so five. So I need five more panels, and that's why I wrote this down, because I don't wanna have to measure it every time, and I'm going to need five more panels that are all the exact same height and width, which is five and three quarter by eight and five eighths. Okay, I'm gonna cover the glue so it doesn't totally dry up been screaming at me that it's been sitting open for a few minutes already so five and three quarters by eight and five eighths this would be a fun uh, vignette to have on one of them so let's see if we can get one of those out of it um, out of this so um, I'm wondering how wide we actually have right there well five and three quarters Should have cut that. I'm going to cut that branding strip off because 
I don't have any space to look at the numbers that, with that branding strip taking up the little bit of extra, extra space. Okay, so if we do this, I can bring it down here and know that it's straight. And five and three quarters would be right here. Okay, if, what if I wanted to get that lantern in and five and three quarters right at the edge of the lantern, then that means I'm end up gonna cutting I'm gonna end up cutting it right in the middle of that nest. I don't mind cutting a little off, but I don't want to cut that whole nest. So I'm going to now I'm going to look at the height, which needs to be 8 and 5 eighths. So 8 and 4 eighths, 8 and 5 eighths. Okay, I want the whole vignette, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that before I start trimming any off the edge, because that'll leave a larger piece here. Okay, and I can't go all the way to the edge of the lantern because I don't have any paper right here. So my five and three quarters can only go as far as the center of that lantern. So if that was about it right there. All right, so I'm going to finish cutting this all the way down, which gives us a little bit of lantern and a teeny tiny little shaving. <laughs> okay, um, that's pretty good. But now how wide is it? What do I need to cut off? See, if you have uh, paper that doesn't have all this stuff on it, it won't really make a difference. You just cut, cut the dimension that you need and go. Because I am being very careful to get the exact scene that I want in it, and you don't always have to do that. Also, five and three quarters. Um, no, I'm going to take that off of here. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, these are really large envelopes. And um, so this is a really large panel. It's not, they're not always that large. Okay, so let's go ahead here um, we know we need eight and three quarters tall by, or excuse me, eight and five eighths tall by five and three quarters wide. Let's take the other side of this, uh, five and three quarters wide. That's gonna cut just barely next to the bird. I feel like I could take some off here and be okay. So I'm going to, what if I take it to six and that's halfway, is that enough? Yeah, that's enough because that'll leave me the whole um, right side that's still six that I can do something with. Okay, so we know that that is six inches and we need it to be five and three quarters. We also need this to be eight and five eighths. Oh, those five eighths drive you crazy, don't they? And the other two I trimmed up a little on the side, so I might end up having to trim it a little bit on the side. Uh, maybe it wasn't the exact... Okay, I don't want to cut these birds in half, and I don't want them to be that low. So I'm going to um, come up here and say if I cut it here, I can still get the butterfly and these really pretty flowers here and get the birds in on the bottom. So I'm going to cut that right there and then let's turn it around and see where our eight and five eighths is. Eight and four eighths, five eighths. If I do that right there, that barely gets that butterfly in. I'd rather take just a hair more off the bottom. So I'm going to go just inside, just outside that butterfly and know that I need to trim a hair off of here again. Yeah, this is the laborious part which, like I said, if you have uh, just pattern paper, then you don't have to do this. Or if you have smaller uh, smaller envelopes, it's not quite as laborious because you're not looking to maximize the paper quite so much. All right, so we've got one here. 
We've got another one here that is the other half of that page. Okay, and then we know we need one, two, three. All right, we still need three more. So, how about one of those? I'm looking to see. Yeah, I know I don't have all six pages here, but how about this page? This would be very pretty. Um, could go this direction, and so the, bi the entire bike could get on there. Or if it went this direction, get the bike, but not much else. So I say we do it that direction. All right, I'm going to cut the branding strip off. And I encourage you to keep the branding strip, especially on Minte and Stamperia, because this is the branding strip from Nightfall. And they, it always has little scenes. There's a little vintage record player there with some of the purple roses, purple roses here. And so I used the cards and I went to the back where it doesn't have the scene, but it has just a frame. And then I cut out the exact size of um, an image out of some of the scrap paper and filled the frame. And then I put Nightfall down here. So that worked perfectly. But yeah, there's great little words and teeny tiny vignettes um, down there to use. Okay, so we're going to put this sideways. That means that this is the width. So that needs to be five and three quarters. And at five and three quarters, I'm gonna go just a hair shy of five and three quarters because we know we had to trim it up just a tiny bit before. And that's perfect. Okay, so that will be our width right there. Now our height is eight and five eighths. And so eight and five eighths right there. If I cut it right there, uh, gets the bicycle in, still gets the bird and all of that. So I like it. Oh, let me just double check that I'm on eight and four and five eighths right there. Okay. Sometimes you move it around and then you're not sure if you are back in the right spot. Okay. So there we go. There's a good one there. Um, could also put it here, depending on what we put over here. Could put this one here, and we need something for the other side here. That could be this guy. Well, let's see what else we've got. Mm -hmm. um, we could put across from him. Um, let's see. We should have a flower background yeah so it's not too busy with vignettes but a, just a complimentary flower background let's do that okay and that is so much easier to cut because we're not worried about getting the particular scene in I am going to cut off the branding strip right here okay and then I need five and three quarters by eight and five eighths. All right, so eight, let's see. Is there a direction that this should go? Probably like this. Okay, so eight and five eighths high. So we'll do that, eight and four, five eighths high. Okay, by five and three quarters wide. I could have I could have pre-cut these, but sometimes people ask how do you choose, you know, what, what scene you're gonna put on there and you know just kind of look at the paper in that regard. But okay, so then we need one more panel for the other side here. What have we got on the back? Um We do have this. We could put, let's see here. And this kind of shows you how to go about choosing what your panels are, what they're gonna be, how, you know, it's, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not. This was a leftover one, huh? Not really crazy about that orange. Um, 
unless you made a second border in there and then put this on with that as a tiny border. That's pretty, but um, I don't I don't think that's what I want to do. Okay, well, meanwhile, let's go ahead and glue these down and see where we're at. I really wanted this to be under an hour and we may be pushing it. Okay, so because I want to make sure that I don't glue this envelope closed. First, let me double check it for size because I want a border. And remember, I had to trim the others down. Ooh, see, that's going right to the edge and there is no room for that to, to um, close. So I do want to trim this down. Uh, again, just a hair and a half. A teeny tiny bit. Let's see, get it right to the edge. Tiny, tiny bit. Okay, let's see if that's better. It needs to be in just enough that it can close. That is almost pushing it right there. Maybe that side, it didn't end up straight. So let's just go that side and just see if we can straighten it up. There we go. Just a hair off of that. That little tiny sliver makes all the difference in the world. If your um, page won't close, cover won't close, or you close it and it ends up bent and broken. Okay, so let's glue this down. Let's get it moving. All right, so how are we going to glue this down to make sure that we don't glue it to our envelope and have the envelope closed and blocked? What I'm going to do is put my thumb on the side that I do not want to glue down. That, to, for me, helps uh, to remind me, do not glue this side, that's why I'm holding that side. So I'm going to put glue on my um, cardstock that's going on it all the way around the outside of three sides because I know exactly what it needs to there. I don't know exactly where I need to here, so that's a little more difficult. Now I'm going to go to um, the envelope and I'm going to put glue on the envelope. I'm going to leave a border there, enough to have a border, and I'm going to put glue on the envelope instead of, and I'm not concerned about getting super close to the edge because it's going to squish. It is definitely going to squish. Um, and I, so I went up to the edge on there and so I'm just going to put some in the middle. And remember, I can always pick up the corners and the edges to add more if is necessary at the edges. Okay, so I'm going to start with this edge down, line it up by the edge, line up my top and bottom, try to get them straight, and then I'm going to put that down. All right, and then pretty quickly, I'm going to open it up just to make sure, well, oh, we didn't glue that one down. Shoot, we did the back one. Um, I just want to make sure that glue didn't seep out as I pressed it down and glue this to the other side, and it didn't, so that's open just fine. All right, so I forgot that we didn't do this one. We did the pocket in the back. We have two pockets, so we need to see what all is op uh, lifted up here, like this pointy end. That one probably is too. Yep, we'll put that underneath. I don't know. How much of that you can see but you know what I'm doing because you saw it last time just making sure that these ends are down flat okay let's check this here yeah that's pretty open right up to the edge okay and I'm gonna turn it over and check this side Yep, the whole thing's open. Don't need much, especially art glitter glue or barely art or stamperia. You really don't need much glue in there, and that's why I do it that way. So I'm just putting a little tiny bit. I don't want big old glue tubes underneath here. Okay, and I want to press that out and make sure that it's flat because I normally would have done that before putting this paper down. Okay. 
then we'll come back and get those corners like we did on the last one. And don't forget that yellow corner is up as well. Okay, we'll see if the corners of our cardstock is down because I didn't go too far up not knowing exactly where to stop. So there is one there. So let me, I just always go back to orient, make sure that I am oriented right side up. Okay, so that there, and now we've got the other side of that one, which we cut um, this one for, right? So let's check that one. That is, wow, that is uh, quite a bit wide. And it might be that it's tucked down inside there far enough that we lost a little bit of space. So I'm actually gonna take off um, a good, healthy eighth, eighth of an inch. And hope that that's enough. If it's not, we'll do it again. It's not, should have taken off a quarter. So let's see, another eighth of an inch for that one. That is not even appearing straight. What is the deal with that? Let me see if this, maybe the end, maybe the end isn't straight. Did I not cut the end? Okay, that end is straight. And that end is not. So let's try this again. You know, things happen. Just gotta roll with it, no big deal. It's only paper, it can always be fixed. Okay, so let's make sure. I took off a, another eighth of an inch there. There we go, that's better. Much better. Okay, this is a solid one, so I can put glue all the way around this one. And down the center. And pop that on. Checking my top and bottom height. They look pretty even. Okay. All right. So then that one will be a pocket. So I have the back of that one, and this one, and the front of this one. All right. Boy, this has taken a lot longer than it normally takes. And I know that that is because, um, where's the bicycle one? I thought we already cut it, we did. We did, and a bicycle built for two. That's a fun song. Okay, so do we want it face in here? Do we want it to face outside? So as you're turning the page, you could turn it that way to look at it, or maybe over here. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Whoops. Let's check it for size. Since they've all been a little screwy, maybe one of my sides was not straight. <clears throat> and I didn't uh, go back and straighten it up or didn't realize it could, like that when you cut off the branding strip, if that. Um, if you don't cut that exactly straight and then you use that as an edge Now your whole thing's gonna be off and that's probably what I did when I cut off the branding strip We thought oh, that's already a straight side go from there. Don't double check that side as you're doing the rest of The rest of your uh, piece Okay, put this one down quickly Side. I'll get the top and bottom about the same. Perfect. Okay. All right. And let's.
let's check our bicycle. Build for one. I think I cut that one smaller just because the others weren't fitting quite as well. But I think I'll take a hair off the top so that I can even up the two yellow borders right there. It fits, but the yellow border on the other one is just a hair larger. So I just want to take off a teeny tiny bit. That's all. And let's see how that... Looks like it fits better. Okay, so let's get this one down. These panels are so wide, it's easier to go down that twice than, than to uh, go down once in the middle. Okay, there's that one. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there quickly. I hate to break this into two. I really didn't want it to be longer than an hour. All right, we need a panel for right here. Got a lot of scraps right there. Uh, we put the solid flowers right there, and let's go back to, where's the other half? Mm. Oh, we could do this one. We talked about doing that one. Um, I think that one would be good, but standing right side up, not, not on the side like that. So where is that? I'm sure there's another panel. Let's see here. Um, but he's at the very top. So what about this guy down here and the front um, the front of the bike or we could go back to this one and take a different piece of it. like that, which would kind of leave this open for a nice corner tuck right there. Mm. Let's see. Let me just remember which ones we used here. Okay, use the bottom of that one. We use the left-hand side of the front one. We use that. Oh, this is the back. Okay, I'll say we haven't even used that guy yet, but it is the back. All right. So, we also have these cool white doors that could then be decorated with butterflies or birds sitting on them. There's the other half of that one that we could, even though he's on the front cover, I think let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so... We know that our, let's see, our height needs to be eight and five eighths. But I could bring it up and put the bird up higher and then use that piece right there as a pocket with the butterflies on it. Um, Cut the branding strip off, and then let's see if we do that. That just gives the same panel a different look because it's cut out of a different piece of the same 12 by 12 sheet. Okay, and then we need five and three quarters, but we're gonna we're gonna likely. Cut that in a bit. Uh, five and three quarters is right there. Let's see if we can save a little time by making it a little bit less than five and three quarters. <clears throat> and hope we did it just right. Oh, it could even be a little bit less of a feeling that's, yeah, that's gonna be real tight. I don't want it to block the cover. So let's just take another hair and a half. There we go. Okay. That 
should work. Okay, so remember last time, I'm gonna put my thumb where I don't want any glue. I'm going to put glue around the outside edge of this one, where I know it'll go on the edge of the envelope. Okay, and then I'm going to put some glue here. It's a little stop right here. I don't know how far to go up exactly, so I'm just gonna stop right there and get some glue in the center. Okay, and that's where my thumb was. So here's where it goes down. Position that. Looks good. It's far enough over that it can close. Oops, moved it a bit. Okay, get that extra glue off. Now I right away want to go into it to make sure I didn't glue this to the other side of the pocket and I didn't. There is no, no glue there at all. Okay, so now we've got those done and I might go back and pick up some of this afterwards so as not to make this longer but I need to go check the edges and the corners where I didn't glue all the way up to the edge not knowing exactly where to stop. Those can always be put down later. I will definitely um, ink it afterwards and then have a thumbnail in there so you can see that. Okay, so there's the back. Okay, so, oh boy, we are already at an hour. We're over an hour, just over an hour, and I didn't want it to go on that long. But I do want to show you how to do these pockets um, if you want it left open. You can actually do the pocket, um, let's do it the right side up. Uh, kind of the same way we did this one, where you just don't glue it right there, um, and you can cut it lower if you want to make it straight across. But if you'd like to leave this, which is kind of a cool, you know, to get in the pocket, there's plenty of room to pull things out, then you can cut it that way. And I'm just going to grab a piece of paper here and show you how I would do that. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have checked all of those uh, inside liners before even using the envelopes. I don't like envelopes with inside liners. They're just not as easy to use. Okay, what I need to get, paper isn't um, totally large enough, but one side should be the same for both sides. Um, let's see if I've got an envelope. If I have one that is the exact size that will fit inside that, it would be a lot easier. What I'm going to do is draw a template. And it really doesn't take long to do. And then you just cut your papers by the template. But if I put this in here, a piece of paper, a piece of cardstock is great. Um, if you have a lot of envelopes and you know you're going to want to use them, use a piece of chipboard. You could use it over and over again. So I'm going to just draw very carefully. I don't want to get on the yellow envelope because remember I'm going to leave a border. So then I have to go erase it, otherwise my pencil is going to be seen um, on the envelope. Alright, so then I'm going to just cut this carefully right where I drew that template. to the point. And the envelope starts to fall apart because there's two sides. So a piece of cardstock is really a good way to go on this. I didn't even realize that they were lined until I sat down to do this. I did see that they had this, this shape. Okay, so if I were to cut my paper this same shape, then I can put it right down here, right? And it'll fit perfectly and leave the perfect border there. So, that's the 
that's not going to work. Let's find, <clears throat> let's find one that is, um, flowers that will work nicely opposite this. Okay. And if this is already cut the right height, but it's obviously not the right width. So I lo I, as long as I know that it's bigger than I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this down on an edge. You could tape it down with washi tape. I'm not going to be in a hurry here. And I'm just going to go, you could do it on the back side too, so that you won't, for sure, won't see your um, pencil marks. Whoops. That's a bit of a bit of lead that came out. Okay, so the marks are there. You could do it on the opposite side. Um, and then just go along here and cut that out. And you can cut in just inside your pencil mark so you know that's not going to be seen. Okay. Once this is cut out, let's see, did that just go right? I think it did. Hopefully it did. Okay. Once this is cut out and I know that this now fits right here, all I need to know is how much to cut off of the left side. Okay. And you can measure it and all, but honestly, I like to just look at it and where'd that funky pencil go and say, okay, right here, I need my border to be right here. So that's exactly where I'm going to cut it. And if I'm not sure that that is straight, I'll come down here, do it on this side too. Now I've got two marks on here, so I know exactly where to put it. And as long as I can see the marks and the glare. Okay, there's my marks. Slice that off. go good to go okay that's how we do that super easy okay so I'm gonna line this up with the top here first make sure I have the same space on both sides. I'm not worrying about the lining because I'm going to put paper there. So there we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put um, paper here. In fact, if this would come up real easily, I would just um, take that up again. You know, should have checked out the envelopes and realized that it had it before ever starting because that doesn't want to come up real easily. Maybe. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe it does. All right. Um, hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. I'm going to leave that white right in the middle because I didn't take it out to begin with. make sure that there's enough for a border right here. Okay. Then I'm just going to glue that down. Glue is drying up because I keep leaving it open. Okay, let's glue that down. Get that little chunky piece doesn't stick under my paper. All right, and then, now here's where I could put the orange on the inside, that might be cute. A Little bit of contrast. I just don't wanna overdo that orange because it's not my favorite. So, but a little bit right here as a contrast would be 
Okay, so I want it to go all the way um, when it's inside. I want it to go all the way to the edge there and all the way to the edge here. So it's going to be essentially the same uh, height as this one, which was eight and five eighths. So I'll just stick this in here and make it eight and five eighths. Okay, and then, actually I could just grab the little trimmer for these. Okay, so I've got eight and five eighths in there and the the width the depth as long as it covers as long as it goes under the point then that's sufficient that's all i need is for it to go down under the point there we go get it perfectly in there and then i still have to get the glue in all right so now these are really awkward to do with double stick tape and that's why I don't use double stick tape when putting these inside um, the pockets. However, a one tip, if you do use double stick tape, double sided tape, you can um, give yourself that extra couple seconds to move it around by putting a bead of glue over top of, on top of the double stick tape. Um, that just makes it wet and movable it will dry within seconds, as you know these do, um, and your double stick tape will take tape a stick just fine, as will the glue that's on top of it. But what you've done is just give yourself a couple of seconds to move it. All right, so let's see if we can slide this in without getting glue everywhere. That wasn't too bad. Is that all the way in? It needs to be in far enough that the page can close. That's our biggest concern. I feel like I moved this one after it was down. But that's okay. All right, just needs to be far enough in that our page can close. There we go. Okay, so we've got our front. Okay, and all right, we need to do one more. So this should work just fine on here. It should be the same um, the same template. We could put the white inside and um, let's see. inside and this one outside so we'll get parts and pieces there all right so could have measured the inside piece of that one um, well we made it the same length eight and five eighths we know that for sure okay and then the depth, it was just a scrap, so whatever that depth was. But we know that it needs to be deeper than the point of the pocket, which is right here. So if we go to right here, we'll be just fine. So again, you can measure it exactly, or you can just mark it with your finger or your pencil and say, right there is where I need it to be. And go to right there. Sometimes that's easier than taking time to measure that. And it's this piece, All right? Whoops. Let's get it on the right one. Um, let's see. We'll like, we'll like it this way. Is that, yeah, that is the right one. I have to glue that down a bit. This one is going to go. Ooh. Feels like it got glued just a little bit. It did. Um, bit of glue there probably from this panel as I wiped the edge with my finger went over the top of that okay there we go that'll work okay so we're gonna 
put that down inside there and that is too tight. So it's the exact same height as the other one. And maybe that's why some of our measurements have been off because uh, maybe all envelopes aren't exactly the same. Even they're supposed, so they're supposed to be, maybe there is just, um, you know, possibility of ever so slight uh, differences when they come out of the machine. If they're cut like fabric, you know, fabric, they stack it up and then cut out, say they're cutting out jeans or pants, they stack up a huge stack of fabric and then cut the line, cut the, you know, cut the leg out. And so the fabric that's on the top gets kind of stretched over as it's being pulled down to cut. And that's why you can try on two or three pairs of pants and they don't fit the same. One is definitely a little bit larger than the other one. Or you'll try on one and you're like, this is really small. This is the size I always wear. It's just way too tight. It might have been at the bottom. That fabric might have been at the bottom of the pile of that being cut. So I don't know if that's the way they cut envelopes. Um, I do know about the fabric, but I don't know about envelopes. If that's the way they cut envelopes, then I could totally see the envelopes not being exactly the same, having reason to have a little bit of um, a little bit of variance. So let's get that in there enough that that can close. Okay, there we go, that works. And then we're going to take this and take our template. And if we wanna use this right as the edge, we can leave this little bird in the picture. We'll go right to the edge here. And I'm still doing it on the front side because I wanted to see where my picture was gonna be, but um, I also think I might've cut that one a little short. so. I'm leaving that right there. You could, oops, you could turn it over to the back side where it's probably, why does it keep doing that? Probably white or lighter and um, easier to see your mark. But I'm okay, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut the pencil marks off anyway. I'm gonna flip this over because I think I might have cut that just a little short. Huh, that's interesting. They're not exactly the same. That tells me that both sides of the envelope we used as our pattern weren't exactly the same. So, and they should be. But, okay, real quickly, we will cut this off. I don't like cutting this direction. So I usually just stay down in the middle and cut up, but I'm going to try. It seems awkward. I feel like I'm cutting left-handed when I do this, even though I'm not. It just feels like it. A little tiny piece of paper down there. Okay, I can look that up later. All right, so this should fit now that we know all the envelopes are not exactly the same, should fit in there, and it does. Might trim up the sides just a bit. And if I go down to the bottom, then I can see I would want the bottom to be right here. And if I go to the side, I want the side to be right here. Okay. So I'm going to grab, I'm just going to use this little cutter because we're not measuring any long things right now. Make sure that that is straight in there. I'm going to cut all the way across because I'm going to need to go all the way to this mark down here. Make sure that that is still straight in there. It is, just making sure I get to the mark. And then I'll put this in here and I can make sure we get the mark on the line, and then I can make sure that it's straight by lining it up on a line on the paper trimmer. And I want to stop right where that, so I leave, I'm trying to leave the paper in as large of pieces as I can for other uses, tags and cards, and things like that, okay. And this could use just a tiny trim up on this side, otherwise it's actually pretty good. Okay. 
there we go. All right, so let's glue that one down. Oops, glue going over the front side. Okay, and let's set it down here. I want to line up the top first. Top meaning the V. Try to get that right. And then everything else should fall into place. The V is right. There we go. Okay, so let's go back to the front. We've got our flap that we still need to cover. And that actually, I intended to cover that before we put this one down, but that's okay. All right, we've got our first page, our second with a pocket, our third with a pocket, fourth. Oh, we've still got to cover this one, okay, with a pocket. That one's covered, that one's covered. We've got a pocket there, full page, and a pocket there in our back. All right, so we've only got one more page to cover, and that is one with, um, where's our template? Our fancy, fancy template here. Um, <clears throat> we need one more uh, let's see. So I'm thinking if we put get this paper out of the way. If we put this on the inside, that's the back of one, and we haven't used that one yet. Um, this side is the butterflies that we could do this. Maybe, maybe not. We can do, yeah, we should be able to get that piece out of the butterflies, and we might be able to get the inside piece out of that section right there. So let's start with taking the branding strip off. And yeah, I cut 12 by 12s with my little paper trimmer all the time. Just line it up and make sure it's straight. I move it down, I bring the blade down and I can make sure it's straight either on here or that side. That side does not work right now because it's all cut out. So I'm checking it on the bottom here. Okay, so what I need is my template and my pencil. Template is right here. I'm gonna turn this around just for ease of using, if I were to put this on right there with that border, is there enough? There is, there absolutely is enough. Okay, so I know that I'm gonna need to bring this all the way up to the top in order to uh, make it work. So I'm just going to set that on there and draw and draw and move it before I've got this end down. Okay, so let's cut that quickly. Yeah, I did move that a bit. So hopefully I cut that right. I have to erase a little bit of that pencil because my pencil slipped underneath the edge of the paper. Okay. Yeah, I got in a hurry. Didn't take all the pencil off. I can always erase it. All right, so now I need to know if that fits perfectly right there, and it does. And then I need to mark where over here, I need it to cut about right here. And the bottom needs to be cut about right here. Okay, so that is not a straight edge, although 
Here's what you do when you don't have a straight edge. I need to cut it right there. I need to make sure this is straight, but I don't have a straight edge to line up here. So I'm going to line my bottom edge up and make sure that my bottom edge is straight with the line that's nearest to it. So that should work there. Okay. And then here is my mark on this one. Um, I don't like to turn it that direction. So I'm putting it down here and I'm having to look down at the bottom to get my, because I want a flat edge, get my mark right where it should be. There we go. That should be just right. Another example of the envelopes not being exactly the same. This one needs to be cut down just a bit to fit. But you can always cut down, you just can't add the paper back on. So I'd rather, I'd rather need to cut it down a bit than try, be trying to add it back on. A little bit more, like to make them even. work. Okay, glue. The end is getting all goopy because I leave the top out. I leave the top off and if I know I'm coming back just, you know, a minute later, 30 seconds later, I hate putting the top back on. If it's going to be a few minutes and I'm going to cut a whole bunch of paper, then totally put the top back on, but I hate having to do that for such a short period of time. Some glues dry out faster than others. All right. Let's bring this right over here. And let's line up our V. If we get the V just right, the rest of it should be just right. Right enough, because yeah, that is not exactly the same as the other, whoops, I moved it. There we go, I'll move it back. Moved it once, move it back. we go. Okay, now we need the piece to go down inside here, and we're going to use the back of this one. And so, I'm hoping that we can get that piece out of there. I think that we can. I'm going to cut it right on the inside of that circle. <clears throat> and I'm just going to cut the biggest rectangle I can out of that section, and then just see what we need to trim from there. Okay, that's the biggest rectangle I could get out of that section. It is a little bit of glue in there. Okay, it is the perfect height. Nope, it's just a little shy. Can I make it work? Probably because it's a white background. Oh, and it's underneath the edges. So yep, it's just fine. Okay, and it's deep enough, it just goes past the V, so that'll work. All right, so let's put that on there. Okay. Maybe I should record another one of these with some of the simple envelopes where you don't have to do all these gymnastics, but I know some of you are going to have, oh, come on, these kind of envelopes, and if I didn't show you how to use them, then it'd be so frustrating to not know what to do with funky envelopes. They're not all flat across the top. I didn't. I did. I didn't. Okay, get that. See, I forgot to orient back to make sure I was right side up. Let me make sure there's right side up. Okay, good thing that didn't have a right or a left. I mean, an up or a down. <laughs> it didn't really matter. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And that's good. Okay, good. So that's the entire um, book right there. All right, everything is in. Everything except the flap. Now, normally I would do the flap, and I would put the piece underneath here and put this one on top of it. But instead, we will do it as if it's a 
um, like a spine binding that comes around here. I've actually done both, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm trying to decide what um, what paper we want on the top here. And we want the butterflies. They would be pretty. There's a whole variety of color. Do we want the flowers? That just seems more busy. I really do like the butterflies. So let's go back here and we'll use the butterflies. All right, so I know it's going to need to be eight and five eighths tall. And I know that I'm going to come all the way out here. Now I could, you know what? I'm gonna, um, I don't know. on this one that I showed you first, the flap is flat. I can make a flat flap if I want by just cutting this rectangular. You don't see any of the envelope underneath this. So I could cut it rectangular and then I cut a second one that goes on the inside, they go back to back. And then this one goes around, around the spine. And then you've got that rectangular one right there. Um, if I'm going to do this pointy one, then I'm going to need to cut it to this shape, but I still um, am going to back it with the inside. You're not going to see any of the envelope because it doesn't, it'll get torn and things like that. So first I'm going to start with a rectangle. So I need to cover the entire um, flap there. And then I want to go around the edge, so I'm going to say, and I can trim it up a bit, but I need to go as far as the body of that butterfly right there. That's how I measure it. All right. Make sure that is straight. It is. Okay. Let's move that over there. Okay, so this... Not that one. This one is going to be, boy, we're going to be pushing two hours with this, but I do want to show you how to do the, the pointy envelope. Okay, so this is going to be our um, flap, and I can choose whatever point I want to be, you know, right out here. And I know it's going to get cut off at a point, so um, if I come down here, this big guy is going to get cut off. If I like to have the the little ones, it needs to go um, as far as that. Um, or I can go up like this. I can go up as far as that. He's gonna we'll let him be right there. Part of him will get cut off. All right, so I'm going to use that. I'm gonna say then I want it to be um, I'm going to give it a little extra. I can always trim it up. I'm going to trim it right here, and I'm going to trim it right here. Again, easy measure. It's easy then. It, when you have paper like that, and you want to get certain images on the paper, it's easier just to lay the paper down, and where's my mark? Where's my mark? I don't see my mark. My, there's my mark right in the middle of the orange butterfly. Okay, it's easier to lay the paper down and just see what scene or what images from the paper you want to go on your item that you're making than to try to measure and keep moving the measurements around and around. It's just, it really is, just really is easier. Okay, so this is going to come around here and be a little spine and then I might just put a little bit uh, run a little ribbon or lace down there and if I want this to be up to here okay I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is just glue this flap down right where I want it I want to try to get this butterfly on it is what I want so 
as much as I can. I know a little part of him is going to get cut off, and I'm okay with that. So this is exactly where I want to glue it right there. So I've got hold of the point, and if I just um, make sure that everything else is lined up, because I can trim everything else even with this flap glued down. Okay, so now I'm going to put glue on the flap. If I put it on the paper, I don't know where to stop, and I'm probably going to get it on the front cover there. So I'm going to glue the flap. down like that. Okay. And with gluey fingers, it's going to stick to the adhesive on the flap. So be careful. Be careful about that. Now I'm going to take scissors, which I have nicely hidden somewhere here. I'm going to take scissors and I'm going to cut around this flap. I'm trying to minimize the glare so I can see. And hoping there's no glue oozing out that's going to glue up my scissors. I hate having to clean the glue out of the scissors. Around that corner and let's make sure that this is down so I don't cut it too small. Let's see, there's a big old glare, sorry. Come on. There we go. Okay. There we go. That works. All right. So that's how you cover that. And then I'm going to take another, I think I'm going to um, end the video very shortly because I really didn't want it to go um, this long, but I will finish it up and put a picture up. Um, but for the inside, I'm going to take, um, I can choose whether I want the butterflies or maybe I want um, these leaves. They're quite pretty. So I will just take this, make sure I can bend that over. I've got to bend it on the outside first and I will glue that down to the inside of the flap. Then I can come back here and I will just cut along right here. Okay. So you only, you don't want to glue them both first because then you can't see the flap to use as your, your cutting guide. All right. So now I want to just bend, use the book to ease this over around your spine. And then I can decide whether I need to cut some of this off here or if that is enough. It might be a little too much because I'd really like to see that cute little bird. It's not too much to have there, but it kind of covers my bird. So I think I'll take off um, not quite half of it. And then I can put some trim or something down that just goes over the edge but would also help hold this down because it doesn't there we go now the bird is totally visible and the bird is very cute so we want him on there okay so I will finish that up I will do the inside um, just like I did the outside glue it on cut around it and then I will put um, the button closure and I will ink the edges. I'm probably going to ink in uh, Vintage Photo or maybe Walnut. Um, give a little bit of uh, a dark nature kind of look there. And I may put a bit of trim right down here just to help that uh, stay down after I glue this. I'm going to glue it and hold it down really well to make sure that it's nicely adhered. And also to um, bring a little cohesion between the spine and the... Um, back of our um, book there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So it'll end up looking like this one, except this one went underneath. And I will probably take some of the same white string that I um, sew my signatures with and choose what color I want to run that through on the ink and uh, just color that and get a, I'll take, pick one of the pieces of paper. Uh, maybe
maybe it'll be that one. Maybe there's a tiny butterfly I could use that would be the top of the button put on there. Maybe something contrasting. Maybe I'll actually get a button out, a pretty yellow button that would bring that all together. So that is our book made of envelopes. I will finish up those small pieces. I will take a picture and put it uh, in the thumbnail. And if you come to Happy Paper People Facebook group, um, I will have pictures in there as well. So love to have you join us there. It's a wonderful, wonderful group. So have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.